And so these lessons I'm reading in these books, rather than always having to read them, I started to implement those lessons in my own life, like forgiveness, change, starting over, and that, you know, your past does not define you. And those were the things that led me to starting. So when I say I started to write, the first thing I started to do. And, you know, that's the beauty of life. And I think sometimes, and most people forget that, is two things. What you said is everyone has a story to tell. And obviously, the older you get, you probably have more stories through your experience. But second, people have a lack of confidence to whether it's writing a book, starting a company, whatever it is that they are have instilled inside of them to do, because everyone has that quiet whisper of like, hey, you, you're meant to do this, whether, you know, an Olympic athlete or, you know, a manager, wh whatever that is, that niche that you have. It gives me great pleasure knowing that you choose to listen to this episode on the John Gardena Classroom. My mission is to serve the Lord by creating content that will help you in your journey of life. If you want one-on-one -on -one coaching or would like to be part of my 40 Days of Deliverance program, please visit my website at johngardena.com. Also, if you would like to give a financial gift to help the show grow or provide the funds for the editing process and publishing of the show, it would truly be appreciated. Lastly, God has given me a vision to have a place in the woods with cabins to enjoy fellowship, healing, along with outdoor activities with others. If you have land and feel compelled by the Lord to donate some to make this vision a reality, please email me. I will have all the information available in the show notes. Thank you, and enjoy this episode. Welcome to the John Gardena Classroom. Today, I have the most interesting, special, unique person in my life that I've met uh, a year ago. His name is Dominic Damaski. He is the uh, he is an author. Uh, he owns a company called Motivation Champs. He has a, a series now of bike and hike. Um, he's worked with many authors. And he is just killing it out there, ladies and gentlemen. So, Dominic, welcome to the John Gardini Classroom. Why don't you introduce yourself a little more for us? John, man, I'm uh, knowing you a year, having broke bread with you up in Cleveland. I um, am honored to be on the show with you. I feel like I feel like I've made it today. So my name's Dominic Damaski. I have a company called Motivation Champs where really 24-7 we try to help people share inspiration, positivity, smiles. And every day our goal is to find new ways to help people share their story, whether it's publishing, whether it's video, whether it's just getting out and doing some nonprofit work or delivering a turkey. If we can uh, put a little more good into the world like John does, that's what we're trying to do. So thank you, John. Well, I appreciate you being on today and taking time out of your day to be here. You know, the one thing about Dominic is that he truly, when he works with you, because he's my publisher, like when he works with you, he's all in. You know, he is, he's got your back. He, he tells you the truth. He doesn't sugarcoat it, uh, not in a negative way, but he just tells you what you need to do from his experience that he's learned in over 15 years of how to become the best individual for your craft and, and for him it's writing but also um you know doing the series of bikes and hikes now uh and his nonprofit as well so let's get into who or how and what made dominic damaski so you have you always lived in uh, pennsylvania the pa area by pittsburgh yeah i'm, I'm a pittsburgher i grew up in i i Grew up in family business. My dad's a landscaper. He's 80 years old and still works every day. So that's that's what taught me. I grew up in a world where my dad was Superman and he worked seven days a week. And I think now he works six. He might take at 80. He might take Sundays off. But I so pulling pulling weeds and shoveling ditches was 
what I knew and it's how I how I grew up, what we did. I pulled I could have dug a ditch from Cleveland to Pittsburgh and, and back. And so that hard work has just been instilled with me in everything I've done. So when I was in my early 20s, I followed my dad's footsteps and decided I had worked for him 10 years or whatever from the time I was like 12 years old out in the fields, trimming bushes and stuff. But I had this idea to start a restaurant. And at about 23, this was prior to the mortgage bubbles bursting back in the day when you could get loans for having good credit and a college degree. So I saved up some money and I decided I'm going for it. I opened up a restaurant and here's a hundred seat restaurant. People are like, wow, look, I had business coming in after a year or so. I thought, wow, I'm going to open another one on the other side of town. That's how, how things were. The trajectory was, and everything turned, the roads went under construction. And then I ended up, John, losing a half a million dollars, going broke, losing the house, losing the car. And at 25, 26, I had to start over. And that's kind of the roots of that's where my story started. And then, so how did I get from that to motivation? And I was a student of Del Carnegie, Norman Vincent Peale. As I was failing in business and trying to get through those dark days, I was reading these books of Tony Robbins and Jeffrey Gittimer and John C. Maxwell, the Bible, uh, Joel Osteen, reading these guys. And I started to think the first company I worked for post restaurant was big on writing your goals down. And I'm reading these guys at the same time and starting to hold a notebook for the first time. And that's when I wrote in a notebook one day. First, it was pay off produce guy or um, get out of debt. And then the next thing I started to write was first book. And that's when I started to tell stories. And that that's the roots of it. Well, you know what? Why don't you just dig a little deeper just in the part of when you when you failed and then what you did besides just reading and writing? Like, did you when your book, did you say, you know what? I my vision for my life is this now. What was that vision? When I when I was going through the failure, like I'm telling you, I was I was going broke. I was on a government repayment plan. Like that that's the reality of when you lose half a million dollars, things aren't pretty. I was only 27 25 years old and now I owe the IRS, you know, 50 grand in back taxes. I owe the produce guy like I said. So it was how do I start over? And the when I'm reading these books, they started to talk about persistence. And I understood that through athletics and things like that. But to pick yourself up, that your next choice could change everything. And so these lessons I'm reading in these books, rather than always having to read them, I started to implement those lessons in my own life, like forgiveness, change, starting over, and that you know your past does not define you and those were the things that led me to starting so when i say i started to write the first thing i started to do as i'm getting a job in yellow page ads at the time yellow page ads for those who don't know what that is that's a big a big book where there was numbers and ads of everybody in your community so i'm going door to door selling those ads and things like that and that was the beginning of the start and while I'm doing that, I started to share my story. And as I it took me seven years to write what was the first book, because I thought, well, maybe I have something to say. And my story was more about getting beat up or going broke or how do you how can you not just wear these scars of the past? How can you start over? And as I once I finally had the book, people would ask me to speak and things and I'd be out speaking and I'd meet somebody like John that had an inspiring story or I'd meet a grandmother that would tell me about her son in the military. And, and I realized very quickly, these people have a story and they would ask me, well, you wrote a book. How do we do it? And I started to think if I was true to my mission, which I knew was to share inspiration, share the smiles, share the stories, maybe I could help other people 
write books. Maybe I could help them share their story through video and me and my son going out and we did this series called Discovering Inspiration. So finding ways to highlight the other people out there sharing their story. And that's how that's morphed over the last. So when you ask, well, how did, did I know where I was going? Absolutely not. I knew I had a mission to share people's story and share inspiration, but I didn't know that it would be my how I make a living, or I didn't know that um, it would t- take off the way it has. Yeah. So, yeah. When and when, what I love about you is that through that experience of the failure, you kind of just got back to work, you know, doing the yellow pages and 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 selling. And then you thought to yourself, like, okay, I'm gonna write a book about my struggles and my triumphs. But then during that time, you discover like wait a minute, there's people who have phenomenal stories who are just as hidden treasure that people need to go tell their story. And I'm actually going to um, read a quote from a book I'm just finishing. Um, This is called The Men We Need by Brant Hansen. And I I read this last night and it was perfect because I knew we were going to talk today. He said, don't let others convince you you're not enough. You don't know enough or you don't have the expertise. You can do this today. Just get started. So your message to everyone today is really just that. Like you don't have to know it all. You don't have to be an expert. You know, what you have to do is find a passion that you have and an interest and then just start start working on those things daily. And you know, you're a perfect example of that. So, what did you learn from your book once you um, published it? What did you learn from that experience and what you wanted to go after that? One, I believe in uh, just back to the point you just made inch by inch. Like if we want to get somewhere, what, wherever that goal is, that mountaintop or out, you, you have to go inch by inch, one step at a time. And so even like with the book, well, first it was quotes or sentences and sentences become paragraphs, paragraph chapters. And before you know it, you have this body of work that you start looking at and this is a book. So for anybody out there, if we go down to the book idea of it, start sharing your story, whether that's on, that's on Twitter, whether that's with your friends, whether that's at the rotary, uh, at, at um, some speaking class in, in notebooks and things like that, start writing that down. And all of a sudden, before you know it, you start to look at this body of work that you have and you're like, wow, there's something here. And so I'm, I'm a big believer in, in that just keep moving forward. So as far as me, I probably made every mistake there was through that first publishing process. I didn't, I was learning on my learning on, on the go and probably let people take advantage of my hopes and dreams at times. And, so when I started to be a publisher and later on, I remembered how vulnerable I was at the time and how much pain and the rejections and the, the not the, the support I didn't have and thought, well, if I'm going to do it, I'm, I'm going to do it a little differently. I'm going to do everything I can to support these people. And so, so much, so much was learned. And I, I continue to John just to try to learn and get better every day. And, you know, that's the beauty of life. And I think sometimes, and most people forget that is two things. What, what you said is everyone has a story to tell. And obviously the older you get, you probably have more stories through your experience. But second, people have a lack of confidence to whether it's writing a book, starting a company, whatever it is that they are have instilled inside of them to do, because everyone has that quiet whisper of like, Hey, you, you're meant to do this, whether, you know, an Olympic athlete or, you know, a manager, whatever that is, that niche that you have, a lot of people don't do it because they have fear of the outcome or they don't have the work ethic to be consistent and disciplined to do it. So your story resonates with me because we I always say you're cut from the same cloth hardworking individual, blue collar, good family man. And you just, you stuck with it and you had that tenacity to, to learn and say, you know what, this, you didn't know where it was going to lead to after you wrote your first book, but then you said, wait a minute, 
I learned through my trials and tribulations that I can offer people who want to write a book how to do it. And I could be that um, just that positive force to them to help them through the process to publish their book. More than the book, though, the story and the effect it has and the ripple effect it has to others. So talk. let's talk specifically about uh, when you decided to start Motivation Champs. What year was that? True. I, I would go back to uh, probably about 2013. But I'll tell you, when we talk about failure, I think around the time I started, maybe even before I started writing my first book, this was before Tim Plated. I started a website called successtrader.com, successtrader.com.org, something like that. And back then, their websites were hard. I'm not a, I know nothing about development or anything. Yeah. So I'd have to, like, I'd Google a story, or I don't even know if Google was around then. So I'd find a story about Lincoln or John Lester that defeated cancer and threw a new no hitter. And I'd try to put quotes in the, the website was terrible. You push on a button and you couldn't get anywhere else from that button. It would take you to a page that didn't work. But I had this idea of sharing inspiration, just sharing good stories. So success trader did not work. It would just, it, it, it could, I'm sitting there and I'm trying to create all this content and it, it couldn't be done. And so as I wrote, I still believed in that concept. And what we do at Motivation Champs is it's everybody's content. So if John wants to come on Motivation Champs and share his podcast, we'd love to have John's inspirational podcast. If somebody has an inspirational story to share, if it's that they lost 20 pounds, good for you. If it's that your kid got an A, we'd love to hear about it. If it's a story you found. So that's what Motivation Champs is. It really is how can we share inspiring content where somebody's story everybody's story is different so i have a an author now debbie griffiths debbie griffiths battled domestic abuse debbie griffiths 30 years ago or so was going through such hard times that she attempted suicide debbie's story is not my story but it's a story that will inspire debbie is a debbie has extreme faith Debbie now wrote a book called Torched, Burnt by a Gaslighter. And her community, her city council, just named October Domestic Awareness, Domestic Abuse Awareness Month because of her. And she accepted the, the medal or, or the plaque in honor of the, the victims facing that. So here's a woman able to use her story. And we were able to help her share her story. And like John's story from Cleveland freedom to ascend is not my story but the story of a, of a teacher giving back that has had students that lives were changed the athletes john's worked with that are inspired to help somebody out well, what a story and me being able to like i john's story about and i'm, I'm going to tell it about the student so the story of there was a student in class that wanted to be a beautician. She wanted to cut hair. Nobody believed in her yet. And May, John said, I believe in you. And he let her cut his hair in class in front of everybody, took the pictures and gave her that belief that somebody cared about her. It's fantastic. And to, for me, for you to allow me to be part of that and for me to be able to help share that story to a community that maybe didn't know John before. And then they see, wow, this guy's a good dude. Maybe there is good out there. There is hope. And I, I'm thrilled. I sometimes think I get more out of being in this community than anybody else does. So thank you, John and Debbie. Yeah. And you have had worked with many authors. Um, and I want to highlight one who just recently passed away, uh, Paul Gray, who you, you gave me an opportunity to connect with him. And he was on my podcast uh, probably half a year ago. And what happens is you have these things. And this is a, a key point I want to express to everyone is networking. So let's talk about networking. I want to talk about Paul for a second in memory of him. Paul, you know, played uh, an instrument. He was all over the country playing. Uh, he just, then he started a church with his, his wife and uh, he just gave back to the community and he served and served and 
he he had a book, you know, Grace to All, and he had a, his, his podcast, Grace to All, and he really taught about God's love and grace for all humanity. Um, but what I learned from Paul from our conversations through telephone and text messaging and through his books is, you know, the authenticity of the character of the individual, which is rooted in love. All right. So all of us have to do a better job of loving one another, not judging one another, and networking with people to grow. Like this, our communities could be so much better. And, and Dominic, you, I want you to talk about this because you do a lot with your community. Is our communities could be so much better if we just start loving people more, love one another, start giving to others, and controlling what you can control. Because many people today listen to media and all they do is get blindsided by negativity. So I would say to you, you know, go be a beacon of hope and a light of love to others and go do something for your family and your community so you can make a positive impact. So talk about some things that you've done in your, your community. Well, do. And I'm hopeful. I want to live in a community, John, in a world where 20 years from now, they say, hey, I remember when people used to share negativity, or I remember when there was divisive content, or I remember when there was polarization between parties or whatever. Well, I just want to live in a world where there's hope, where there's good, where there's positivity. And so that's the content I try to share, the organizations I try to be part of. And before we get into that, I want to say, I love Paul Gray and he was, he is and was just the best man, a man of, man of hope. I had the opportunity to speak to his wife the other day and Kitsy and she's as lovely as Paul and she's, and I let her know that I had got calls from, here's a man that lives in Kansas that just shared God's grace that I got calls and messages from Cleveland, a John Gardena, from Orlando, from Texas, from New York, from St. Louis, all these people asking about, and she said, how did all these people know about Paul? And just like John saying here, it was, it was network. Here's a guy that was so good and his light was so bright that you just had to connect and network. And to your point about that, find those people and network with their, there's so much good out there. And if you can get involved in it and you said about my community, I'm wearing this shirt today. I'm proud of it. This is feeding the spirit. And a friend of mine was a runner in our local community. And about a decade ago, about 12 years ago, she was running on the trail and she started to see more and more homeless people on one of the local trails that that goes about 12 miles. And she thought that's not right. And so then she starts packing sandwiches and taking them on the runs and tucking them in there with their blankets and things like that. They run at five in the morning and then she gets some money, get some helpers. There was a whole running group and they started to run together and pack them. And I had heard about this cause I was friends with one of the guys and I'm like, Man. and I, I knew the lady. So all of a sudden I was in a business group when it goes to networking. One morning we had feeding the spirit come in and this is, now probably a decade ago and she comes in and she tells about the organization she tells her story i'm like i love it how do i get involved so at once once a week we'd start there was a meal every thursday and we did it in the bottom of an otterbine church because they allowed us to set up down there and we started we'd have 50 people 60 people 70 people 80 people 90 people 100 people 110 that in the bottom of this church then during the pandemic we had to move out of the church. We moved to a park and we were feeding. Now it's 10 years later, we were feeding up to five, 600 people in the park on a, on a given week, just on, on a, a Saturday. We said we switched from Thursday to Saturday back then. But now the mission's grown. And really what we tried to do is break down the barriers of poverty, homelessness, and hunger, try to be a transitional resource so that and you might have this in your community where sometimes somebody shows up with a plastic bag and all they have is a plastic bag and you, and we don't judge. So that plastic bag, they may, it might've been a person that got out of jail that day. 
And so maybe we can give them a room for an evening or help them get a cell phone so they don't go down the same path. Maybe there's a woman that was in the uh, battered woman shelter that is thinking about going back to her husband. And maybe we can provide her housing for a couple days so she can make a different decision than going back and her children seeing her hit her, her be hit one more time. Maybe with three days of clarity, she can find other hope. So what we do is whether it's a bus ticket, whether it's a, whether it's a, that weekly meal, uh, a ride somewhere, uh, a gift card so that they can, um, so somebody could get gas in their car or get a new shirt so when they go on your interview, we're trying to stop the cycle and we just keep, it's feeding the spirit, feedspirit.org and we just keep trying to find as many ways as we can to um, stop that cycle and just really um, maybe create the ripple, John. Well, that's, I mean, that's powerful, Dominic. I mean, that's the one thing I think people don't realize that once you just start getting traction with using your gifts, then you start being around people like we talked about networking. And then if you're in the right environment and mindset, then you, you're around good people. And I think the one thing people don't realize in this country, there's a lot of good people out there. All they hear is clippets from and sound bites from, from media or social media that the, the world is being destroyed by political parties and uh, in other, you know, um, <laughs> just crazy nonsense out there of this, this cloudiness in their mind. And I think what I learned from working with you in the past year is just like these stories and, and what you can control. So too, what you can control to be a positive light and also tell your story. And how do you have a better story? You got to experience life more. You have to go out on a, on a limb and say, you know what, I'm going to take a little risk here and maybe start a, a YouTube channel and just show expirations. And we'll talk about that in a little bit, but people need to just let go of the fear, start getting some traction of things they enjoy being around that are positive for their community, maybe for their family or just for their own, uh, own sake. And once you do that, just like the, the lady who, you know, feeding the spirit or feeding the homeless on her runs, something powerful comes out of that, that you start having this, not a prideful power, you start having this power of, again, I'm, it's rooted in love. You're doing things for others with compliments of your gifts that you have been given. And once you have those two things aligned together, you're offering this world, again, like we said, a beacon of hope, of prosperity and inspiration to continue this ripple effect throughout your community, but also this nation and hopefully the world. So Dominic, I, I really love all the things you're doing. Um, and is there anything else you'd like to talk about feeding the spirit? We'll, we'll put in the show notes about where that people can go to support them. Well, I'm so proud of them. And just so you know, like we served 10,000 meals last year. We got 600 families off the street paying for rent assistance. And it, so there's temporary housing that we, we do temporary housing and we do rent assistance. We're keeping them in their home, keeping them from being out in their car where they're cold or that their car gets broke into so, something like that. I just want people to know that there's people hurting in the world and the pandemic didn't help it. You know, inflation doesn't help it, whatever. Like, But there are people hurting, but you can make a difference. I, I'm so I, I see that story of the little boy and the starfish throwing those starfish back into the ocean one by one, one by one. There's hundreds of starfish, thousands sitting there one by one, throwing them back in. And the guy comes up to him and says, well, you can't save them all. And the little kid says, yeah, but I saved that one. And then you think, well, like at Feeding the Spirit, we can provide a meal for three dollars, you know, a, a night in a room a night off the street, $70. So when you think, when you think $3 doesn't make a difference or that you can't make a difference getting out there and holding the door for somebody or offering a smile, you absolutely can. So I would encourage anybody 
to um, l- lift a hand, lend a smile, get out there and make a difference. Yeah, uh, that's beautiful, Dominic. I'm going to pivot here from um, doing things for others and serving others to really your passion. We talked about you um, as a publisher. We talked about you as, as an author and how your writing and, and how you learn so much from going through those trials and tribulations. Let's talk about what currently you're doing um, with your with your bikes and hikes, which I love. I, I see little snippets on social media in your videos of uh, you working. And I, I apologize, I don't know his name, but just you guys have just this passion to go out and, and explore these trails. So go ahead and talk about your bikes and hikes series. Oh, I'd love to talk about bikes and hikes. And it airs in Ohio too. So any anybody that has Armstrong in any state, we're on the Armstrong Omni channel. So check it out and you'll find it there. And it airs on YouTube as bikes and hikes. And one thing I believe, whether it's bikes and hikes or any content, there's a lot of great ways to share a story. And early on in my storytelling, I might have thought that maybe I thought early on that I needed to be a speaker or that I needed to be a writer. But like John with this podcast, there's a lot of great ways to share. Why not start a podcast? Why not go stand on a stump? Why not dance? Why not paint a picture? There's a lot of great ways to share a story. So bikes and hikes, me and my friend Dave, decided, well, what if we went out? Could we, what if we went out and explored these trails? What if we went out and explored and hiked around and showed people that right in their backyard, and that's really what the story, the show's about, that in your backyard, there's things that you didn't even know existed. Go out and have an adventure. Make it an adventure. Make Memories. At the end of the show, we always say, remember, memories are just a bike or hike away. And that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to show you that. Get outside. Get with your family. It doesn't have to cost money. It doesn't have to just have fun. And that's what bikes and bikes and hikes is at its at its core. So how long did you start this bikes and hikes series? So I've been I've been a rider for years. Me and my dad rode to Washington, D.C. one time from Pennsylvania. We did all these trails and so it's been something I enjoy. And me and my friend Dave, we would ride together. And then it was the idea of pitching this show. And then together we, we thought to ourselves, well, let's, um, let's do a show where we bike. And then we thought, my dad's always like, well, let's go climb this bridge. Let's go look down there at this. So when you're, you don't want to have blinders on, so we thought if, if it was bikes and hikes, we could explore even more. We could see even more things. And, and that's where that's where we came from. And I will tell you on that, John, like we talk about the different ways to share the story. So and I like to talk about failure, too. So a few years ago, I thought, well, what if what if people could share their story on screen? And I started going in one. I started writing screenplays. And then as I'm writing, I thought, well, I can't write a screenplay if I don't know the business. So then in Pittsburgh, the movie business was blowing up at the time. So I started, I'm like, well, I'll go be an extra. On the extra, you basically stand there and do, you know, stand there and you're a prop in the background. So I learned. But the first time I ever, the first set I was ever on, I learned the first thing out I was writing, the budget of it was too high. So I had to go back. I learned from doing stepping out that, oh, this now I need to rewrite. So now I've done more and more stuff on screen, whether it's bikes and hikes or in productions in Pittsburgh. Sometimes I think I got sometimes you think it's your big break. And all of a sudden I've had to hold a plastic hot dog for 12 hours. Other times I've been drivers for a month at a time and I'll drive character around, characters around on scene and things like that. But each time I'm learning. And what I learn on from Amazon and Netflix and things like that also helps me on bikes and hikes. I see, oh, they're, they're doing it with 100 people. How, do, how can me and Dave do it with three people? How should we sit or two people sometimes? How should we set our cameras up and things like that? So it's really, to your point, you step out of your comfort zone. You learn, you learn, you learn. You're networking with people like my friend Dave and opportunities come. You know, that's what 
you're such an amazing person because the 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 personality you have of being okay with failure is what I think people need to really understand. You you can't live life in this bubble or shelter of your home or apartment. You need to go out and explore trails. You need to go out and explore failure through maybe a job. You know, maybe it is through writing. Maybe it's through, you know, trying to produce a movie or or, a short film. But if you just say, ah, I'll try that. Or maybe, maybe you did try it and you failed and you just put it away. You know, the thing I learned from you, because when we first, when Freedom to Ascend came about, like we had to do a whole rewrite um, at the very end. And I was, (laughs) people don't really know the story because I don't don't really talked about it, but it was just a circumstance that it was at that point in the book um, with the other individual. But what happened was, you know, we came together as a team, Dominic, Elaine, my editor, and myself, and we decided like, hey, John, you need to tell your story from your perspective. And after we had that meeting, I'll never forget, it was at the end of the year of, of 2021, uh, I got to work to finish my story. And it, I think the book came out better than it was intended. And it was because people have to understand this. You're going to have trials. You're going to have failures. But who you're with, like dealing with that, to support you and say, hey, listen, this is what you have to do, John, to make this come to fruition. So I, you have to adhere to sound advice from other people's experiences. And then you got to get to work and then work on that and then come back to the editing board and say, hey, this is good. This is bad. And I finally had my vision become a reality after I think it was in 2010 when I first wrote my manuscript, ABCs to Life, which part of that is in Freedom to Ascend, but it's a process. But if you're passionate about something that you have a vision for, you have to understand that the process is not clean cut and linear, that you're going to have these peaks and valleys. But who you're with and who you surround yourself with and how you work at it, constantly learning from others, or through other videos on YouTube or other people who are professionals is how the growth really occurs to share your message with everyone. So Dominic, let's, let's finish on this note. You know, you have a breadth of knowledge from your experiences as a, as a father, as a husband, as an author, publisher, through all these production videos, all this different stuff. If you were a person, maybe just out of high school, maybe in their 20s, even 30s, what would you offer them to have a fulfilled life from the knowledge that you have? Wow, I love I love the question, John. Look at you. This is a subject, it's a touchy subject with people, but I want people to follow their passion. And the problem is sometimes at 18, 19, 20, you don't know what your passion is. So you do, like you said, you have to try these things and see what it is you like. Get out and get out and see the world, meet new people. But then I would tell people to go all in on their passion. And whether that's sometimes your passion, you might have to do it at night. Sometimes you might have to you might have to have a day job so you could do your passion at night, you know. But I, I just really think people are gonna hurt if they don't follow that passion. So hundred percent, that's what I want. That, that's perfect. You know, I think that's um, a perfect segue to end this show is that follow your passion, do what you love to do, make sure that you're going out and exhausting your gifts um, for what you love to do, but more than just a selfish righteousness that you have for doing it, but also what we talked about earlier is providing opportunities to help people in your community by serving others' needs and, and just literally going out and telling your story of how to love and be a better person. So, um, Dominic, I really, yeah, I, I, Dominic, I appreciate your time. You're just a, a a beloved individual for who you are and your personality. And I, I just can't wait to continue to work with you and more books and possibly a video series. And, uh, you know, I really appreciate everything you've done for me in my life. All right, everyone. Well, thank you, Dominic Damaski, for being on today.